Dan Reincarnation Chapter Yes, if Hamel's Tom truly existed, then where on earth could it be found? Perhaps Helmuth. Eugene recalled the location of the place where he had died in his previous life, after the oath of peace had been sworn three hundred years ago. The demon kings and the demon folk had abandoned their invasion plans, even the monsters who had been driven insane by the whispers of the demon kings came back to their senses, all the demonic beasts spread across the continent with orders to attack people indiscriminately returned to Helmuth without leaving even a single one of their number behind, a hundred years had passed like this, the demon king of destruction remained as silent as always while the demon king of incarceration, as the representative, of all demon folk, set about correcting the damage they had done, of course, things didn't go so well, there were too many countries that had been destroyed by the demon folk, leaving too many people who had lost some in apricious to the demon folk, so even though the demon king himself came forward and bowed his head in apology, the fear and hatred humanity held towards the demon folk did not subside, so the demon king of incarceration sold out the names of the deceased demon kings, he claimed that even among the demon kings, there was a factional divide between the doves and the warhawks, he further added that the deceased demon kings of fury, cruelty, and carnage were the members of the warhawk faction, while he was the sole member of the dove faction, even the demon king of destruction, who had stayed completely neutral and kept their silence throughout the war, had desired this war, most of the immediate subordinates of the deceased demon kings had been killed by the party of heroes, and the few remaining subordinates were kept under the complete control of the demon king of incarceration, those demon kings were dead anyway, so no matter how much the demon king of incarceration maligned them, how were these defeated and deceased demon kings supposed to retaliate against this slander? In addition to this steady push of propaganda, the demon king of incarceration also provided generous financial support, he built a grand city on the outskirts of Helmuth for all the refugees who had been displaced by the war, for the countries that had suffered the most terrible devastation, the demon king dispatched his own men to build new buildings and pave new roads, he also poured huge amounts of war reparations into the treasuries of the victimized countries, on top of that, the demon king had purged many demon folk, holding them accountable for these war crimes, this continued over the next hundred years No, in fact, reparations for the war were still being handed out, so Helmuth's neighboring countries were still receiving financial support from the demon king even after three hundred years had passed, that was how the devoldom of Helmuth was able to become a great empire, an empire, here, Eugene didn't really consider Helmuth to be a true empire, it was just a hell where the different races of demonic beasts, demon folk, demon kings, and the black wizards who had sold their souls to the demons managed to somehow coexist, however, while Eugene might think this way, the rest of the world recognized Helmuth as an empire, the neighboring countries that continued to receive Helmuth's support were virtually identical to the protectorates of Helmuth, the capital of Helmuth was named Pandemonium, this was where the castle of the demon king of incarceration could be found, there's no way my tongue could really be in Pandemonium, how could his body have been laid to rest in the demon folk infested capital of Helmuth, which was still ruled over directly by the demon king of incarceration. That just couldn't be possible. If that indeed was where his tomb lay, it was practically an insult to all Hamel had done in his life, if his companions had actually managed to slay the demon kings of incarceration and destruction and then went on to annihilate all the demon folk living in Helmuth, then he wouldn't have minded if they had built his tomb there, instead, under these different circumstances, he would have been happy to accept such an honor, but they had failed, both the demon king of incarceration and the demon king of destruction were alive and well, in the first place, did my corpse really survive that curse? Well, it wasn't like you strictly needed a corpse to construct a tomb, but seeing as Sayana had left her familiar there and become enraged that someone had managed to break into the tomb it looked like his corpse really had been hidden. Away somewhere in this world, but where? If it's a tomb, weren't they usually built in a place that was deeply connected to the deceased person? There was no way it would be in the demon king of incarceration's castle, so, Eugene suddenly realized, I, could it be in my homeland? 
if it's a place suitable for building a tomb, wasn't his homeland the most likely site? Eugene recalled his homeland, which he had never been too attached to in his previous life. Hamel's hometown had been located in the frontier regions of the Cheros Kingdom, although he didn't know what it was like now. It had been an extremely unpleasant place to live back in his previous life. Monsters frequently emerged from the nearby forests, and parrots from the mainland of Chiris often came in raiding from across the sea. So Eugene, a voice called out to him. Eugene had been in the middle of taking a walk outside of Akron to organize his thoughts, as he heard this voice suddenly call out to him. Eugene gritted his teeth in annoyance, for some reason. The wizards who were showing an interest in him seemed to really like the idea of an accidental meeting, was it because they wanted to make the meeting seem more casual? But if that was the case, they should at least properly hide all the obvious signs. The wizard waiting for him had been shuffling around impatiently as if he was just begging to be noticed, and when, when, Eugene failed to show any reaction and just ignored him, the man had started talking to him anyway. Is there something you need? At this midnight hour, Eugene bit out impatiently. I was actually following you, Sir Eugene, the man admitted. Still, at least it was fortunate that the man who had come looking for him was Bolsak Ludbeth and not the commander of the court wizards or the green tower master. Bolsak walked out from under the magic street light and smiled at Eugene. I've actually been following you ever since you left Ekron. Did you not notice? Sir Eugene, Bolsak asked him. I noticed it immediately, Eugene revealed. I just kept quiet since the Black Tower Master seemingly pretended not to recognize me. You seem to be in a bad mood, Bolsak observed. Well, what's new about that, Eugene scoffed. That's true, however, it seems that your mood just happens to always be bad whenever we happen to meet. Could it really be because of me, Bolsak asked politely. It seems you're well aware of the truth. Eugene nodded. He had met the Black Tower Master quite a lot of times during the past two years he had spent in Aruf, though they hadn't really talked much whenever they met. Usually, the Black Tower Master was the first to try and greet him, and Eugene would exchange a perfunctory greeting while showing his pleasant displeasure. That was all there was to it. They had never once shared a good conversation. Fortunately, the Black Tower Master didn't seem to take any offense to Eugene's attitude. Nor did he try to stick to Eugene like the commander of the court wizards and the green tower master had done. Bolsak got straight to the point, I've heard that you will be leaving Aroth, where did you hear that from? Eugene questioned, I've heard it said in many places. Sir Eugene, could you really have believed that rumors would not flow even after the red tower of magic began to prepare a farewell party for you? Bolsak appeared surprised. It seems that the position of the Black Tower Master is actually pretty comfortable since you have so much time to carefully listen to the affairs of the other Towers of Magic. Wouldn't it be better for you to use such passion to pay more attention to the activities of your own Black Tower of Magic, Eugene suggested. Bolsak shrugged, even without me getting involved. The Wizards of the Black Tower of Magic are doing fine on their own. Thanks to that, I'm very free. Even though Eugene had openly rebuked him, the Black Tower Master's smile never wavered. Eugene disliked this Black Tower Master. Honestly speaking, he hated Bolsak and felt disgusted by him. During his past two years in Aroth, Eugene had heard various rumors about the man several times. Bolsak Ludbeth was quite a unique individual even compared to the other Tower Masters. Decades ago, Bolsak hadn't been a Black Wizard. Originally, he used to be a member of the Blue Tower of Magic. And on top of that, he was an outstanding wizard who was almost certain to become the next Tower Master. The current Blue Tower Master was Heridas Usland, but when Bolsak was still in the Blue Tower of Magic, Heridas had always been evaluated to be worse than Bolsak. Bolsak should have risen to become the next Blue Tower Master within a few years, but he had suddenly left the Blue Tower of Magic and gone to Helmuth. The reason he gave was that he wanted to broaden his knowledge of magic. Ten years later, Balzac, who returned from Helmuth, had already become a black wizard. Immediately after returning to Aroth, he transferred his membership from the Blue Tower of Magic over to the Black Tower of Magic. Then, while winning the recognition of the Black Tower Master and receiving the overwhelming support of the other black wizards, he rose to become the new Black Tower Master. After rising to the position of the Black Tower Master in this manner, 
Balsic didn't appear to do anything within the environs of Aroth. Balsic had even managed to maintain a good relationship with Heredus, who had become the Blue Tower Master, and he reached a friendly consensus with the Blue Tower of Magic itself. He showed respect to the royal family while also being close to the Parliament. He also stayed on good terms with both the White Tower of Magic and the Green Tower of Magic. The only tower that kept its distance from Balzac was the Red Tower of Magic, with Lovelian as its Tower Master, and this was only because Lovelian truly hated Black Wizards, not because the Red Tower of Magic as a whole held enmity toward the Black Tower of Magic. In other words, even though Balzac was a Black Wizard, he was able to get along well with everyone around him, just from what Eugene had seen, Balzac's approach was extremely sensible, he went so far as to bow his head in order to show the Lionheart clan his respect, and he didn't use the influence of the Demon King of Incarceration behind him to take control of the situation or place pressure on anyone. At first glance, he appeared to be quite a nice black wizard, but from Eugene's point of view, there was simply no such thing as a good black wizard, in Eugene's opinion. The only good black wizards were dead corpses or cripples unable to use magic. You must be happy to be so free since he wasn't feeling too good, Eugene couldn't help but be sarcastic. Although Eugene was openly frowning at him, Balzac just nodded with a grin, and it seems that Sir Eugene you have it hard with how busy you are, Balzac noted in amusement. No, wait, could Balzac truly just let Eugene's rudeness pass without a comment? It seemed that Balzac was still only human after all so how could he accept being treated this way by someone a lot younger than him? Although Eugene didn't know their reasons for it, this was the first time Balzac had responded with anything other than sheer politeness. Balzac waved his hand, Oh, please don't get me wrong. I didn't mean that to be sarcastic. Sir Eugene, saying that just made his previous words sound even more sarcastic, Eugene didn't reply immediately and just flatly stared at Balzac. Balzac got back to the point of this conversation, now then, what was I saying, right, I've heard that you will be leaving Aroth the day after tomorrow and would then be heading over to Ruhr and Nahama, it seems you've got quite a lot to say today, Eugene observed, it's because I have some concerns about you, Sir Eugene, Balzac explained. Eugene hesitated. Concerns, all of a sudden. Eugene's brows furrowed as he stared at Balzac. Balsak continued, the Northern Rook Kingdom is close to Helmuth. So why does that matter? Eugene asked eventually. It's relevant because the Lionheart clan's influence won't be able to stretch that far, Balsak warned. Originally, the Ru strictly prohibited the entry of all Demonfolk and Black Wizards, but since five years ago, the royal family has become especially stubborn about it. But the latest episodes are on the website. Eugene listened quietly. There are a lot of demon folk in Helmuth. Among them, there are also those who seek to go against the will of my master, the Demon King of Incarceration. In the first place, the Demon King of Incarceration is not the only Demon King who reigns in Helmuth. By that, do you mean to say that the Demon King of Destruction is preparing to make a move? How could that be? Balzac shook his head with a short chuckle. That isn't the case at all. The Demon King of Destruction, while well, they don't enjoy violence. Also, they've always shown respect to the Demon King of Incarceration. If the Demon King of Incarceration isn't making a move, then the Demon King of Destruction also won't make any movements. The Demon King of Destruction was a first rank Demon King, recalling some distant memories. Eugene clenched his trembling fists, like their name suggested. The Demon King of Destruction brought destruction with him wherever they went. In his past life, the party of heroes had never truly confronted the Demon King of Destruction. They had only ever seen the Demon King of Destruction moving from afar. Eugene still couldn't be sure exactly what he had seen at that moment. Was it a black no a grey blob? He couldn't even be sure of that. All he knew was that, on the other side of a wide open plain he had seen that blob of colour move. The truth was, he couldn't even be sure that that was the Demon King of Destruction, but he couldn't help but believe that it was. If something like that wasn't destruction, then what on earth could even be called destruction? If something like that wasn't the first rank Demon King, then what on earth could even be called a Demon King? That feeling of existential doom had appeared briefly and then vanished from the other side of the plains. 
but everyone who saw it had lost consciousness for a moment. Let's go and fight him. We need to slay him. No one had said anything like that. If Anais hadn't uttered a prayer, thus calming everyone's minds, then they might have fallen into an unsightly frenzy. However, Sir Yijin, even if the Demon King of Incarceration doesn't move and the Demon King of Destruction keeps their silence, that doesn't mean that all demon folk will stay quiet, continued Balzac. Doesn't that mean your master is lazy and indifferent, Black Tower Master? Yijin asked provocatively. However, once again, Balsak didn't show any displeasure, instead, he just smiled while nodding in agreement, those words are undeniable. Yes, it's the truth, the Demon King of Incarceration doesn't suppress the Demon Folk under his control to keep them from taking independent action, my merciful master, he respects the freedom of all his servants, Balsak unabashedly praised the Demon King, visit for a better Uso experience even though this seemed contrary to his name as the Demon King of Incarceration, however. My master still clearly draws a line, it doesn't matter if you take advantage of the freedom he offers you but you alone are responsible for the consequences that might arise from your actions, just think of Baron Olfa, the one who tempted Yang Award, he had to pay for the problems he caused with his own life, Bolzak casually brought up a sensitive topic. Eugene held his tongue, Balsak continued, demon folk are naturally violent, the stronger the demon folk, the more violent they are. And among the demon folk, many are sick of this peace that has been going on for hundreds of years. The world might be at peace but the demon folk, ha <laughs> ha, it might sound ridiculous for me to be the one to say this, but the demon folk aren't a group that can truly be satisfied by peace. Are you saying that thanks to your demon king's indulgence, they might be a threat to me, Eugene clarified, I'm just saying that there may be many demon folk who think this way. Balsak said as he lowered his voice, he stared at Eugene with a smirk in his eyes and continued, this statement does not just apply to the demon folk serving under the demon king of incarceration, the silent demon king of destruction also has demon folk serving him, if it's to finally break the silence of their master, they might just be willing to do anything. Eugene didn't reply to this and just glared at Balzac. Faced with this silence, Balzac could only continue the conversation also among the high-ranking demon folk, a few wished to become one of the new demon kings. Since the original five demon kings have shrunk down to just two, doesn't that mean three slots are now vacant? Duke Diabella is one who is eagerly eyeing such a position. Can't they just hold a vote for it? Eugene asked as the corner of his mouth curled up in a smile. You can just gather all the demon folk together and nominate new demon kings. Balsak seemed amused by his suggestion, haha <laughs> while it would be nice if that were the case. Unfortunately, the demon folk don't believe in holding elections. The demon folk are a group that would just smash the ballot box if they feel that an election wouldn't go the way they want. It's because they're like that that they hate peace. Thank you for this warning. For Eugene, these were just words. He didn't actually show any gratitude by bowing to Balzac. Instead, he stood there casually and stared at Balzac. Since you've said all this, I might try going to the Ruhr at another point in time. With his current skills, was Eugene truly capable of fighting high-level demons? Eugene believed in his strength. But it wasn't to the point of overconfidence. He also hated the idea of getting into danger because he needlessly got involved with something troublesome. He might still go there someday, but he only intended to visit Ru after he was confident that he could handle the danger there. I also need to pay attention to the matter of the Moonlight Sword. Eugene reminded himself. Self. He had managed to purchase a fragment of the Moonlight Sword at an auction house. They had said that the place this fragment was discovered was in the Hazard Hills, so in a few years, when he was ready to go to Ruhr. He also planned to make a trip to the Khazad Hills. As for Nahamaham, Balzac trailed off with a thoughtful hum. The latest episodes are on the website. He had already warned Eugene about Ruhr, but it seemed that Balzac wasn't done talking just yet. He pondered something for a few moments before smirking. You should be careful in the desert, Balzac advised. Eugene asked, because of the sandstorms, no. Because of Amelia Merwin, Balzac said as he raised his hand, with a snap of his fingers, his shadow rose from the ground and engulfed Balzac's hand. 
but the demon king of incarceration has declared the Lionheart clan a friend. If Amelia Merwin, who has made a personal contract with the demon king, were to harm me, wouldn't that make the demon king of incarceration a liar for calling the clan his friends? Eugene asked. Bolsick simply answered, she's special. Even though Eugene had directly implied that the demon king of incarceration might be a liar, Bolsick still hadn't dropped his smile. Bolsick added more detail to his answer, she was even before she made a contract with the demon king of incarceration, she was already an amazing black wizard. Haven't I already told you that the demon king of incarceration respects his subordinates' right to freedom? Even among all his servants, Amelia Merwin especially enjoys a lot of freedom. Eugene was silent as he processed this. If in the one in a million chance that you do accidentally bump into Amelia Merwin, you can try and give her this. Bolzett's hand was now holding up a black envelope which he offered to Eugene. If you give this to her, no matter what you might have done to her, she probably won't harm you. Open bookworms thought shall do readers. It's yacht we've heard and taken your feedback into consideration. We have been splitting chapters so that you may enjoy Dura on a daily basis but as the novel gets interesting, we understand that some may want to read the full chapter instead. If the public decides on full chapters, then the release rate would be full chapters from Monday to Thursday, and a bonus chapter on Friday if the chapter length over those days are too short. Dan reincarnations upcoming chapters starting from August onwards and your satisfaction hinges on your vote so be sure to vote. The poll will be open for days and will close on July. Stand as always, thank you for your enthusiastic support what is this? Eugene asked, as you can see, it's just an envelope. Can I examine its contents? Feel free. Eugene immediately broke the seal on the envelope as soon as he was handed it however. There was nothing inside, the contents aren't really necessary, Sir Eugene. What's important is that you will be holding onto a letter that I wrote myself, Bolzak said as he waved his fingers with a grin. The broken seal fixed itself and retached as he continued speaking. I might not be able to handle the sort of threats that might show themselves in rural, but I can deal with Amelia Merwin's grudge against you. So if you intend to go to Nahama, please take this with you. What is it that you want from me? Eugene asked. He couldn't help but be wary of Bolsek. After having come looking for Eugene to give him a warning about going to Ruhr, Bolsek had now even handed him a personal letter to help deal with a potential threat. Since Bolsek was showing Eugene such consideration, it was clear that he wanted something in return. Instead of answering, Bolsek asked, Do you hate black wizards? Eugene naturally replied, Of course I hate them. That hate is unavoidable, Bolsak nodded in understanding, however, oh, I would like it if you could at least hold a little affection towards me. By any chance, are you gay? Eugene asked bluntly. Even the perpetually calm Bolsak didn't seem to have expected him to say such a thing. Bolsak couldn't respond immediately as he stared at Eugene with his jaw half dropped. Ho, oh, Bolsak eventually managed to grunt in question. Jin. It's just a bit suspicious that you're treating me so well, Eugene explained, although I don't really have any inclinations to that side of things since the Black Tower Master has been so kind to me, I can't help but feel a little distressed and worried. Worried. Bolsak gave a strangled yelp, for my chastity, or even, although I've said this already, I have no interest in that side of things, Eugene repeated. Hold on, I'm a little flustered right now. With a confused expression, Bolzak adjusted his glasses. Please don't have that sort of misunderstanding, it's just I only want to build a friendly relationship with you, Sir Eugene, merely as one human to another. Yes, so please don't get the wrong idea, isn't that the case with everyone here, not just myself, you might still be young, but we all know that you have a lot of potential, Sir Eugene, for now. I will receive what you've given me with gratitude, Eugene hastily stirred the personal letter into the cloak of darkness, however, it feels like I won't be able to repay this favor any time soon, so I guess I'll just be going then. Oh, yes, Balsak seemed relieved, if I could, I would have liked to invite you to my farewell party tomorrow. Ah, but having said that, please don't actually show up, Eugene requested. 
Although I do truly feel that way, the human mind really is an ambiguous and strange thing. At the moment, I'd like to invite you, but if I did see the Black Tower Master show up to my farewell party tomorrow, I feel like I'd be more upset than pleased by it. I won't be going, so please don't worry about it now. Volsic just seemed exhausted. I am amazed at the magnanimity of the Black Tower Master at having said so. Well then, I will see you later. With a quick bob of his head, Eugene turned around. After gazing at Eugene's receding back, Bolsak let out a snort and shook his head. Even though he spent the last two years living in the Red Tower of Magic, the only ones that Eugene had really gotten to know were Lovelian and Hera. Thanks to this, while it might be called a farewell party, it wasn't all that grandiose, however. The location and the identity of attendees were still quite impressive. The party was being held on the top floor of the Red Tower of Magic. It wasn't just Lovelian and Hera there, but the White Tower Master, Melkith, the Crown Prince of Aroth, Hanin, and the Blue Tower Master, Heredus, were all here as well. well. Including Eugene, that was six people, although they could have invited more, Eugene didn't want that, he was reluctant to invite that Ovrida Commander of the Court Wizards or the Green Tower Master, and the Black Tower Master out of the question from the very start, Why did you invite me? The Blue Tower Master asked Eugene. Hanin and Melkith had developed good relationships with Eugene, however. Herodus and Eugene had barely said anything to each other. Occasionally, when they came across each other within Akron, they would exchange casual greetings. And that was it. It's not like we're completely unfamiliar with each other, Eugene noted. But aren't you even more familiar with the Tower Masters who aren't here? Why ask when you already know the answer? Herodus couldn't help but smirk at these words. Don't take your avoidance of the Green Tower Master and the Commander of the Court Wizards too far because that will just make them even more interested in you. Herodus advised Eugene. It looks like the Blue Tower Master isn't all that interested in me, observed Eugene. Although I am a bit interested, I'm not the type who would disregard his own face to try and steal away the Red Tower Master's disciple, Herodus admitted. But that's just what the Green Tower Master keeps trying to do, Eugene smirked. Visit. For a better Uso experience, Generic has always been extremely greedy. His self-esteem and stubbornness have always been stronger than his regard for saving face. But try not to hate him too much, as he said this Herodus took a sip of wine. Then he let out a sigh from deep within his chest as he stared at Lovely and talking to Hanin. I am a little envious. Herodus admitted to himself. Herodus also had a disciple, as it had been three years since they had last met face to face. His disciple's skill should have improved compared to... to... When he had last seen them, although he had once felt that his disciple wouldn't fall short of anyone no matter where they went if he compared his disciple to Eugene, he couldn't help but feel that they were a bit lacking. Although I was sure that it would be the case, it looks like you haven't invited Bolzak, Herodus said eventually. Eugene couldn't deny it, yes, well, my master would also be displeased by it, so. Eugene felt pleased by the direction this conversation had taken. He turned to look at Herodus with bright eyes. Could I ask what type of person the Black Tower Master is? Eugene asked him. What kind of answer do you want to hear? Herodus didn't seem flustered by the sudden question. Eugene admitted, I've heard that the Black Tower Master used to be part of the Blue Tower of Magic in the past. So you want to hear about Bolzak's past? Or do you want something more recent? Herodus continued to ask, is there a big difference between the two? Eugene questioned, they're not that different, even in the past. Bolsek was mysterious and it was hard to tell what he was thinking, though that's still the case today. Herodus chuckled as he shook his wine glass. Herodus seemed to be looking dozens of years into the past within his swirling wine. Haltingly, he began to speak. What I still can't understand is why Bolsek left the Blue Tower of Magic. At the time, I was inferior to Bolsek, though I'm afraid that might still be the case. There's no way. Eugene encouraged him. No. No. I'm speaking seriously, I can say this since I'm from the same generation as Bolzak. He could have become the most outstanding tower master in the history of the Blue Tower of Magic. However, I guess that wasn't enough for him. It's not like I can't understand why that might be. No matter how amazing a human's magic is, in the end it's still just a human's magic. It's impossible to surpass the magic of a demon king though after having said this Herodus burst into laughter. Of course, that's not an absolute. 
because there's the wise Sayana as the exception to this. That's why I have to ask Eugene, just how much have you been able to understand about Lady Sayana's magic? You're really asking me if I truly understood it? I just made sure to observe it diligently, Eugene said humbly. However, you must have gotten something. But don't worry about telling me since I have no intention of spying on your research, Herodas assured him before falling silent for a moment lost in thought. When he came out of it, he said, So I've heard that you're going to Nahama. Yes, Eugene confirmed. The desert is a harsh place, Herodas warned him. It's hot and there are a lot of sandstorms. This is important advice so make sure not to forget it. If you insist on going to Nahum, make sure to hide the fact that you're a lion heart once you've entered. My master also told me to do that, Eugene reported. Herodas provided some more information. Currently, things there are unsettled. Lately, the assassins of Nahama have been seen wandering around during the day rather than solely at night. Hopefully, they won't try to persecute you just because the Lionheart clan is part of the Kyle Empire, but there's nothing wrong with keeping your guard up regardless, right? I'll be sure to keep your words in mind. Eugene had no intention of ignoring the old wizard's advice. It's not like his words were meant to insult Eugene. Herodas had said this because he was worried about Eugene. In the same vein, Eugene also had no intention of ignoring Balzac's advice. Eugene judged. If there is a scheme going on, rather than Mullen, Anais should be the one behind it. Most recently, 100 years ago, Mullen had been cited attending the ceremony to commemorate the founding of Rua, but Eugene couldn't even imagine how Mullen, that fool, might have had anything to do with his reincarnation. Just a small reminder from a that Anais was last seen in the desert of Nahama. That's why Eugene feels like it's more important to go to Nahama than to Rua since he is inclined to believe that Shen knows more about his reincarnation than Mullen. Open Bookworm's thoughts. Oh, but Being so irreverent might just be one of Eugene's greatest talents, Momo. Eugene had me at, are you gay? Couldn't stop laughing all by myself. Yosh. Ha ha ha, Eugene kills me. Hello to readers. It's your we've heard and taken your feedback into consideration. We have been splitting chapters so that you may enjoy Jura on a daily basis but as the novel gets interesting, we understand that some may want to read the full chapter instead. If the public decides on full chapters, then the release rate would be full chapters from Mon to Thurs, and a bonus chapter on Fry if the chapter length over those days are too short. The latest episodes are on the website. Dan reincarnations upcoming chapters starting from August onwards and your satisfaction hinges on your vote so be sure to vote. The poll will be open for days and will close on July. Stand as always, thank you for your enthusiastic support.